Hello again for Skill of the Week. Today we are going to be talking about line, and that is an element of art that we use. Uh, it's made by a pointed tool, either a brush, a pencil, a stick, a pen, a marker, whatever, and is often defined as a moving dot. It has length and width, and is very tiny compared to, the width, I'm sorry, is very tiny compared to its length, usually. A line is created by the movement of a tool and pigment and often suggests moving in a drawing or painting. Now, the pigment might just be the pigment of a pencil. The pigment might be the pigment, which is color basically, of a marker or a paintbrush dipped in paint. So you can get, let me just show you this line thing. This is going to be up in the room. Okay, you can get very thick lines, you can get very thin lines. Uh, paintings can, can be created solely out of lines. Okay, this is uh, Mark Toby's painting, Calligraphy in White. Okay, so if you look really, really close, it's a bunch of different kinds of lines in there. Okay, lines can be very expressive. Okay, a variety of lines is almost endless. And many adjectives can describe the quality of a line, like nervous, soft, flowy, that kind of thing. Therefore, lines can be expressive and suggest suggestive. Okay, Lines in nature uh, can be seen as tree branches, wires, cracks in rocks, grasses, flower stems, spider webs, telephone wires, that kind of thing. Okay. Contour lines, see if I can not get so much glare on here. Contour lines define the edges of things. Okay, they describe shapes and forms. So let's see if I can get less, there we go, less shine on there. Okay, in this little section, lines can be used to create values and textures. Patching is the placing of many lines next to each other, and cross hatching occurs when many parallel lines cross each other. So that's when you can create different kinds of textures, different kinds of values. You want really dark areas, you'd use, you'd use cross hatching. Lighter areas might just use hatching. Okay, gestural lines are to create quick movement or just to capture an image really quickly. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth as well. And our eyes tend to follow the directional lines that gesture lines uh, help us with. Okay. And there are things called implied lines, like the color between the, or the line, I should say, between the color of the lemon and the color of the background is an implied line because we see the shape. Okay. It's not an actual drawn line. If I would draw a line around that uh, to create a contour line, that would be a completely different line. This is completely implied by our eyes. Okay. So I want to show you a Leonardo da Vinci drawing. Okay, and he did a lot of sketches with just uh, lots of different kinds of lines, and then he would flesh them out in paint. Okay, this is done with silver point. It's, he's actually drawing with a piece of silver. Now, silver ages over time and turns this beautiful sepia tone colored. Okay, and as you can see on some of these, like his armor, see the lines on there, and He's creating value. He's creating a flat surface because he's doing straight lines. Whereas in other areas, he uses curved lines, okay, and variety of shade shading as well, okay. So like with the with the area on the wing, okay. Notice the curved lines. He's creating a rounded surface. So he's using cross contour with his lines to create a round surface. Okay, uh, here you can barely see the lines on the back part of the helmet to create value there. Okay, he's just hatching it basically. And he does darken his line a little bit to kind of create that form that he wants to really define the edge. He darkens like right around the the profile of the face, he's darkening, darkening it. He might even create a darker edge to create a little bit more depth, more shading there, uh, to indicate that that, like that lip, it's really hanging over, okay? It's got quite a indentation before 
the chin. So that indicates a little bit more shadow there. Okay, so you can suggest things with your lines as well. Okay, his hair here uses curved lines to create that texture of hair. These are even lines, the shading lines. They're just really close together. As you remember, if you recall in my little video about using your pencils, you can use many, many lines right close together to create different kinds of shadows and shading. Okay, and so even though this is a line drawing, it's fully fleshed out. He has developed it so that you can see lots of detail and it's not just a basic line drawing with no shading whatsoever in it. And his shading is uh, the way he creates his lines. So I'd like to see you guys working on that as well. And he liked to say, art is never finished, only abandoned. So, you know, you might think something's finished and then you uh, put it away and then you come back to it a month or two later and you see it in a different way and you say, you know, I could really work on that some more. So there are things that you can do to create uh, more interest in your pictures with the way you make your lines across the contour of an object. Like if I were to draw across my cheek, I would use curved lines to create that image of a curved surface. If I'm doing a flat surface like the ceiling, okay, I would use straight lines. But everywhere on an animal, on a human, on anything in nature, usually you want to create curved lines so that it gives the indication that this is a live thing. All right, there's your element of line.